In this video, I'm going to share 10 tiny habits to lose 10 pounds. Anyone who has ever lost weight knows that it's not always easy. In fact, it's rarely easy, but you can do hard things. I'm Dr. Morgan Nolte, founder of Zivli, and we help people reverse insulin resistance for long-term weight loss and better health. I've had two kids in my life, and in my experience, the last 10 pounds were the hardest. Currently, I'm working on some body recomposition goals, including losing some body fat. So I've had to revisit some of the lessons I learned after both of my pregnancies. These are great reminders for anyone trying to lose weight, whether it's your first 10 pounds or those last 10 stubborn pounds that you've been trying to lose for months. These tiny habits are in no particular order or importance. And I would encourage you to just listen to all of them and then pick only one to start incorporating into your lifestyle at a time. Once you've made that one a habit, revisit this video and pick another. And not all of these may be appropriate for you. So focus on the ones that are and go from there. Be sure to watch till the end because I have a bonus tip for you. The first tiny habit that I implemented was not finishing my kids food. Growing up, we were praised for being part of the clean plate club at school. And if we didn't finish our food, we were shamed by our religion teacher in high school. People would actually try to hide extra ketchup that they got in their milk carton, and he would make them eat it so that they wouldn't waste any food. So if you were gonna throw food away, you definitely had to hide it from that teacher. It can also be a little bit annoying to save just a few leftovers or throw away food instead of eating it. I felt like not eating the food was letting it go to waste, but in reality, it's not. I can save the food just as easily as I can finish the food. So that's the first tiny habit. Stop finishing your kid's food or your grandkid's food or your partner's food. The second tiny habit is to track your food. It is amazing to me how easy it is to overeat healthy food. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy eating a good, healthy meal. And it's easy for me to justify to myself to overeat if that food that I'm overeating is healthy. Over time, any excess in energy will contribute to weight gain. So that is one thing I have to watch in order to maintain my weight and especially to lose the last 10 pounds. I use the Carb Manager app. I do not use this all of the time, especially when I'm in maintenance. But if I have certain goals, I'm definitely going to use this tool. If you want to learn how to track your macros, we have a free set of videos at zivly.com forward slash macros. I find it way easier to track throughout the day as I eat things versus wait until I track all of my food at the end of the day. It's just too easy to forget what I ate and how much I ate. Plus, if you wait until the end of the day to track all of your food, you likely haven't course corrected throughout the day to really hit your nutrition goals for the day. This is a good segue into the next habit, which is to actually measure out your food. It is so easy to overestimate portion sizes of fat, starches, and sugars, and underestimate protein and fiber portion sizes. I would encourage you to do a little test with yourself and scoop out one tablespoon of peanut butter and then measure out one tablespoon of peanut butter. Then pour out one serving size of cereal or chips and then actually measure the serving size. I was thinking that I was having one tablespoon of peanut butter, but I was really having two. Or I was thinking that I had one serving of Siete chips when really it was closer to two especially for more calorically dense foods like nuts, seeds, nut butters, and cheeses, you're really going to want to watch the portion sizes to control your overall energy intake. The next tiny habit that I found so helpful is to go for a short walk after dinner. I don't know about your house, but we have two young kids and dinner time is not always the most peaceful or relaxing time. It feels like my husband and I have to get up about five times during the meal to get various requests from our kids or things that we forgot. It is really easy for me to want to emotionally eat after the kids are in bed. In the past, this used to be my me time. I would augment those feelings of relaxation with popcorn and chocolate chips. Again, 
I would underestimate the portion of chocolate chips and popcorn I was actually having. Maybe your choice is a glass of wine or a hard seltzer water or some chips. Whatever it is, it's adding extra calories at the end of your day and not helping with your weight loss goals. So for me, I love going for a short walk, ideally by myself right after dinner. This gives me the chance to lower my blood glucose after dinner and reset my mind for the evening. I'm absolutely an introvert. I can fake extrovert pretty well if I try, but I'm a hermit at heart and I need to respect that. I need that time alone to recharge my own batteries. I'm way less likely to emotionally eat when I'm calm and relaxed. And that evening walk really helps me to get into that state of mind. The next tiny habit that I've implemented is to drink decaffeinated tea in the evening. Because my emotional eating habit was so strong, I've had to use several methods to stop it. In the beginning, I would brush my teeth, have a cup of hot tea, and have a piece of gum if needed. Now that I'm a little bit more removed from the habit, I'm able to get away with just tea or brushing my teeth and a cup of tea. Now, do I ever emotionally eat or emotionally eat at night? Yes, but far less than I used to, and now I recognize what's going on and I own my choice. I also try to choose healthy foods to eat if I am going to emotionally eat. The next tiny habit, which for some of you may not seem very tiny, is that I significantly reduced my alcohol intake. Alcohol has seven calories per gram, and it is not just empty calories. Alcohol is metabolized in your liver and can actually increase sugar cravings. Not only does it increase sugar cravings, but it will reduce your inhibition. So you're gonna be more likely to eat high carb and high sugar foods that will spike your blood sugar and insulin and increase your calorie intake, which ultimately leads to weight gain. Not all calories are created equal. Alcohol is one of the worst types of calories because it's a literal toxin to your body. For those of you justifying a one glass of red wine a night habit because of the antioxidants, there are other ways you can get your antioxidants without the ethanol. And there are other ways to relax than with alcohol. I used to justify a little bit of wine every now and then, or some of the alcohol seltzer waters because they were lower in sugar. But what I've realized over time is that I don't actually want to drink. I want to relax. I want to unwind. And alcohol may provide that temporary feeling, but it never lasts. I never finished the drink and thought, oh my gosh, I am so glad that I had that. But whenever I didn't drink, I thought, I'm so glad that I didn't drink tonight. I also slept better and felt less bloated the next day than I would have if I'd had the drink. I have a podcast interview coming out later this year all about alcohol. And after doing that interview, I was very motivated to just stop drinking altogether. Since that interview a couple months ago, I've had one sip of alcohol to try a Bloody Mary at a lake party. When they offered me more, I just said, no thanks, I don't really feel like drinking today. When you're confident in your choice, they will be too, and they'll be less likely to push it on you. Now that's not to say that I'm never gonna drink again in my life, I probably will, but I just don't need to, and I don't normally want to, and I certainly don't like the extra calories and lower inhibition that it causes when I'm trying to reach a certain goal for body composition. The next tiny habit is not eating standing up. I realized that I was consuming an extra 100 to 200 calories easily just when I was cooking dinner. This is a really hard habit for me to break and I'm definitely not perfect. It became such an automatic thing for me to have a little bit here and a little bit there. If I don't go into dinner with the intention of not eating before I sit down at the table, I will eat. So I have to be very mindful and intentional. And then when I do eat, I try to fill my plate with healthy, nutritious food and stop there. Which brings us to the next tiny habit, and that is to not go back for seconds, even if it's healthy. A big part of losing weight and maintaining that weight loss is self-control and self-discipline. I know many people don't like to hear that, but it is the truth. Your health, weight, and body composition is a culmination of so many choices throughout the day. If you want great health, you've got to get really good at telling yourself no. You will always want to eat more. The question is, will you feel better after doing so? 
Make decisions today your future self will thank you for. The next tiny habit is to keep quick, healthy meals on hand. Meal prep can be a little bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. I like to keep a few really fast and healthy meals ready to go. I do a lot of smoothies. I do a lot of egg scrambles. I make a lot of bowls that I can just toss things together like beans or lentils or meat with some vegetables and cheese and nuts. I keep my meals very simple and repeatable. This makes it especially easy when you're tracking your macronutrients on Carb Manager because then you can just copy the meal from one day to the next. The last tip may seem obvious, but it's often overlooked, and that's to drink a lot of water. Your urine should be clear or very light yellow. A good goal is to drink at least half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. So if you're 200 pounds, that would be a 100 ounce of water per day goal at a minimum. I drink way more water than this and I go to the bathroom all the time. It's just part of the deal. So try to drink most of the water during the daytime hours and reduce your intake at night, which is gonna help reduce how many times you have to get up at night to go to the bathroom. This water should be purified and unsweetened. A lot of people like to use electrolytes in their water. And if you do that, I would just encourage you to use the unflavored variety or to make your own. I usually just make my own with a quarter teaspoon of magnesium, an eighth of a teaspoon of potassium, and an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. If I want flavoring in my water, sometimes I'll use lemon juice or lime juice. The bonus tip is to drink apple cider vinegar before a high carb meal. Taking one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar once or twice a day before meals is actually really good for your blood sugar regulation. Now I don't do that every day, but if I'm gonna have dessert or a higher carb meal, I do try to take apple cider vinegar right before that meal. The apple cider vinegar helps reduce the glucose response after the meal. This reduces the insulin needed and ultimately reduces fat storage. Now you will get the best results with the raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar. They also make tablets which do work but may not work as well. The apple cider vinegar gummies are usually loaded with added sugar and will likely raise your blood sugar response so I would avoid those. So which of these tips do you plan to try? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see more content like this, type more in the comments below so that I know. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel. To learn more about how to eat to lower insulin resistance, take our insulin resistance diet starter course found right there, and watch this video next about a simple strategy that helps you lose belly fat.